Hey everybody, Chris Linton here from Tribe Fit, and we are very lucky to have, hopefully I pronounce it correctly, Joe DeRoche um, from Canada, Ontario. Is that correct? And did I pronounce it right, mate? DeRoche. Ah, shit. We're close. We're, we're almost, <laughs> we're, we almost nailed it. <laughs> I think I said exactly what I said a minute ago when I was double checking how to pronounce it, and I got it wrong there. DeRoche, not De, De, oh, I don't know what I said. Anyways. There it is. Let's rip straight in. Joe, lovely to have you uh, with us. And um, I guess first and foremost, um, we'll jump into Joe's background. But Joe's um, a gym owner. We're going through the specifics on that. He's obviously jumped online. He's kicked some massive goals in a pretty short time. And um, it's really good to, to hear, I guess, from someone, especially like deep in the COVID sort of period as well. But mate, without me trying to tell your whole life story, I'll throw it to yourself and Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background uh, and what made you want to go online and what made you actually pull the trigger uh, and start moving forward on it. Yeah, so I've been in the fitness industry now for kind of as long as I can remember. A lot of it started back um, in athletics and sports. Um, I mean, personally, I was playing hockey. And then I went through school. Um, Got a bit of a pause there. all the aspects of it. Um, and kind of for the past six years now, I've been running, I've, I own and operate um, two fitness studios, um, which have been great. Um, I've loved it, grew a fairly big clientele. I mean, between the two studios, we're up around like 1500 members, which has been, which has been great. Um, but going through that side of it, um, we're very good at the training part of it, but there's that disconnect between the fitness and then the nutrition component. So. Mm -hmm. About a year ago, um, I started kind of looking uh, towards the online stuff to try and find and add in that missing component because I saw people getting great results in the studio, but controlling what they're doing outside of the studio yeah. seemed to be um, a huge area of opportunity, um, not only to help them progress, but also an area for me to potentially make more money because it was just something that we couldn't offer inside our studio under the franchise regulations. So. Mm -hmm. I started kicking my tires with that about a year ago and I had assumed, silly me, I had assumed that based on the amount of people that I knew, how well ingrained I was in the fitness industry. Um, I'm also a Lululemon brand ambassador, so I know a lot of people on that side of the network. Um, and then I know a ton of people in, in sports and athletics. So I just assumed that as soon as I put my name out there that, um, I was offering nutrition and stuff like that, that, that people would just automatically start coming towards me based on my reputation and, and things like that. Yeah. And the things that I have achieved, cause I'm pretty, I was, I'm fairly well known in the community here. I was the, also the young entrepreneur of the year last year from the new market chamber of commerce. So cool. I thought that with all the things that I have accomplished that people would just, Oh yeah, let's just go to him. So I was uh, really, um, awakened from that pipe dream yep. but I kept trying to just do the little things and hounding my network um, on top of trying to run the studios and I wasn't gaining much traction with it so I kind of just pushed it to the wayside and that was kind of the end of that and then once uh, the pandemic hit and I had to close the doors to the studio I had nothing but time to focus on building um a secondary income i guess so to speak um but also it was a really huge shock to the system when year one way of earning money ends and you're kind of in the wing sitting in the weeds i guess trying to find um something new and something that um is feasible something that could be scalable and something that can can earn some money and then that led me to doing some online homework and I came across TribeFit. And I will say the one thing that kind of made me want to pull the trigger with TribeFit was the, the amount of testimonials that you guys had. And yep. then also um, everyone, I mean, I talked to the person that I had initially talked to, where they were just, everyone just seemed very down to earth and it didn't seem like fake or gimmicky. It was, 
real people with real problems and you guys were helping real PTs get from A to B. So that really drew me in and uh, made me want to dive in head first and kind of, I guess, here we are. Yeah, mate, I appreciate all the kind words and it is something that we, you know, really pride ourselves in. First and foremost, um, you know, nothing is more important than, um, you know, students and clients' results and, and results speak for themselves. Um, so I guess having one of the biggest testimonial walls and so fast growing is really, really important to us. And, and, you know, people can be out there and shout how awesome they are, but I, I truly believe that nothing's more powerful than what other people say about you. Um, so I appreciate yeah. the kind words on that, but going back to your point about, um, COVID is that, yeah, the amount of people I've spoken to that were like, Oh, I had all these plans and, wanting to do all these things and it was just kind of just too busy to do. Um, and that came yeah. along and it kind of forced you into going, all right, now I've got time. And, and you know, the, 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 the I guess to kick up the butt to get moving forward in that stuff is, is like a, that rude awakening of, Oh damn, like everything's shut down. I've got to build other opportunities. I've got to build other structures. And, and as um, a book I was reading earlier this week, you know, when they researched average millionaire or multimillionaire or billionaire, each one had a, an average of seven different revenue streams um, on, on average. And, and, you know, having different revenue streams in different capacity, I guess, sets you up for a strong foundation for if one does close down, that you've got other opportunities um, rather than kind of freaking out. But that's awesome. In terms of, um, I guess, going back, so you now soon to be or slowly opening the doors to your uh, physical location. How are you going to kind of integrate what you've learned from the online space to, to boost up your, your face-to-face -face stuff as well? Sorry, I, you just kind of cut out there at the end. Can you ah. just uh, repeat? Yeah, no worries. For me? Um, so now that you've done the online, you've got, got purely online clients um, with your physical location in-person stuff. Um, what or how are you going to try and link the two together to make you, your physical business stronger? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. It's not something that um, I've been lately. I mean, through this whole time, working through the modules, um, the big thing was putting the systems in place so that you can scale the business without having to be hands-on 24-7. Yep. So I've been trying to spend a lot of time to not just automate the certain features that um, normally you'd have to sit there and do over and over again, but really understand the processes behind everything so that it doesn't take me two to four hours to do a, a task anymore. So I think I've been moving through the, through the program a little bit slower, a little bit more monotonously, I would say, because I, I wanted to, to fully understand how to operate the online business seamlessly and then be able to kind of transition that when I do become busy again, still allotting X amount of hours a day that I can still grow it. But I think the cool thing is, is that I can perfectly tie it into what I'm doing when I open, because now that I have the systems and procedures in place, I have such a volume of clients that I know need this service that I'll be able to take that network and either market this new service to them or just simply organically reach them and have something new and exciting for them to offer, which is, which is going to be cool. But I think that was my initial fear going before starting with tribe. It was how yeah. I don't have the time to, to do both. I don't have the time to do this properly. And I'm kind of one of those people that if you're going to do something, you got to do it right. You, you got to be able to put 100% into it. Um, but now having done it, having seen the small amount of success that I've seen in a month and a half, I know that it's realistic to say that you, I can do both now um, and I can hopefully scale them both at the same time and put 100% of effort into two to, two to three hours a day and still yep. get where I need to be, right? Of course, of course. No, perfect, man. And you pretty much came out the gates um, off the top, man, I can't remember. You came out at the gates pretty quick and picked up your online clients um, 
pretty fast as soon as you got into it. So how many, I guess, how many clients did you pick up in like the first couple of weeks? Um, in the first couple of weeks. So in the first month we had done, I had done just over six and a half K and under your advice, um, the minimum that we were offering for the product was a thousand dollars Canadian. So we had, um, I had, I think it was at least six new clients. And then I had one of my relatives cause I was just blasting everybody who I gave a little bit of a discount to, but, um, yeah. So in the first four weeks I had six new high ticket clients, um, which was awesome because that was more than I had in all the months kind of before I would have people here and there, but again, and when you don't know how to package your offering, you don't know how to do it right, mm. do it right. You're selling yourself for a hundred dollars here and there, just to say you have a client, right? And <laughs> um, it uh, it wasn't ideal. And then I will say the the kicker was after right near the end of those kind of around the fourth fifth week, I did that. I did a word of mouth explosion yep. and I could not believe the, the response. It was, uh, it was absolutely wild and just had another influx of, I mean, there was probably 30 plus people that had submitted to work. So it was another influx of five to 10 more clients. So it was, uh, it was pretty, it's been pretty cool to say we have been as high as um, 15, 16 clients and just under, it's been what six six and a half almost seven seven weeks I guess yeah so man. yeah it's been a, a wild ride but. yeah man hats off and, and congratulations like you know you've done the work um, and you know I guess the awesome part is is that come COVID a lot of facility and physical location owners were like staring down the barrel of, barrel of a gun of shutting everything down and having no income and having, you know, outgoings of staff and, and lease and equipment and so on and so forth. And to go from, you know, that stage, I know there was a lot of people who at that stage kind of froze in fear. Um, but for yourself, like hats off for going, okay, here's where I am. I need to do something about it. Pulling the trigger on something and getting the results. And, and I, I guess, you know, being able to be in that position of go, well, I've got all this cash coming in, helping all these clients rather than just sitting on my hands and, um, and worrying about and just going deeper and deeper, I guess, into, into, you know, the cost debts and all that sort of stuff. So, um, mate, massive shout out to you for that in terms of, I guess, where have you seen the biggest change in what you were doing that wasn't getting results to, to what you're kind of doing now that, that that's getting that traction? I would have to say it was just um, like originally I was just relying on my own network. Um, and again, I had just assumed that people would come, would come to me, of right? Course, of you course. could post on, you, <laughs> you post on your Facebook here, you post on your Instagram and you just assume that uh, people are going to flock to you. Right. Yeah. But the more, the more homework I did and the more I kind of understood what was going on online there's just there was there's so much noise and initially that was my biggest fear was how am I going to break through the noise but it was finding ways to like you say hone in on one specific niche get out of the general population and then bring bring people to you don't sit and wait like it's not Noah's Ark right you can't it's not build it and they will come yeah. you have to go out and get them so that was probably the the biggest thing was I had to find ways to strategically go and get the exact people that I was looking for. And the Facebook group also adding into that was pretty cool. Like building your own little community um, within your bigger community of like-minded committed people who are all kind of your exact avatar of similar problems that you can solve. So that's been, those are probably the two biggest things. Um, and then obviously the Facebook ads, I, I always had used an agency for my studio. I had no uh, idea how it worked. Yep. All I knew is that I was giving them X amount of dollars a month to spend and they were sending me, sending me leads. And that was, that was that. So actually sitting there going through the process of figuring out and learning how to do it on your own um, has been really eye opening, And that has obviously found um, 
is the scalable success, which I think is, which is awesome. That kind of really fired me up understanding cool. that and then being able to, to take that to the next level was, uh, was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I say to everyone who pays an agency to do their, their, their ads, like, um, yeah, it's easier, but, uh, I guess from a results perspective, like you're kind of giving the keys to your future to someone else and, and like they've got their total control of where you're going to go, how fast you're going to go, how much profit you're going to make, how many clients and impact you're going to have. And that's a pretty dangerous thing to be putting yeah. your future in, in someone else's hands who potentially doesn't really care too much because it's not, you know, you're just a number to them. Um, so I guess from the here and the now, so let's just say, you know, roundabouts, you've had 15 clients, thousand dollars a package, 15 K, um, six weeks. So, where to from here? What's, what's the, I guess the next six weeks look like for, for, for Joe? Yeah. I mean, my initial goal was to do nine K nine K a month. So I had, I wanted to get, I just want to be able to consistently do that. And then my biggest thing right from the beginning is something that you guys said was you have to spend money to make money. So figuring out where that, balances on the ad spend and and time to continually drive in the right amount of traffic in order to get those sales i think if i can continually do nine new clients a month i'll be a very uh i'll be a very happy person and i know it's manageable for me to do um and then i know that it'll bring in the right amount of money and then also if i'm consistently doing that hopefully up the price and then kind of keep, keep going from there. But I've learned throughout these, these six and a half, seven weeks that it's um, just to do it and then, then tweak it as you go. So yeah. that's been, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more in the coming weeks um, about how to do things better and more effectively and more efficiently. But um, yeah, if I can consistently do nine a month, I'll be a happy, happy guy. Beautiful, man. We'll, we'll get you there for sure. And, uh, and that, you know, doing nine a month and running your other business at the same time, um, phenomenal and very doable, uh, especially as you mentioned with ads just being so leverageable um, once they're all firing and rolling. So I guess... I appreciate it. Man, if, if you could go, if you could jump in a time machine, as I'm, I'm sure we all wish we had, you could jump in a time machine and go back a year when you said you were kind of looking into the online space and, and dabbling here and there. What uh, like if there's someone listening today who is where you were a year ago, what, um, you know, just to wrap up, is there any advice um, that you'd give them that would be able to kind of fast track uh, the, the process for them? Yeah. I mean, everyone's, when you're looking, I found when I was looking for online um, help and support, it was I, in the back of my mind, it was, Oh my God, that's expensive. That's expensive how can you justify spending that amount of money on a coach You're you're smart enough you can do it on your own um but i i've learned from experience that, that you cannot you can do it on your own but it's going to take you a heck of a lot of time and you're going to waste more money than than you earn trying to figure out how to do it properly and probably lose a lot of hair along the way yeah. um so i would just say just commit um you'll be happy that you started and you'll make your money back faster than you you kind of dreamed you would um it's money well spent the best investment you can make is is in yourself and you'll make it back within the first month so i just i would say just just dive in head first commit to the program and um you're guaranteed to find success along the way beautiful mate beautiful well mate appreciate your time uh, i know you're a busy guy and uh, i know that uh, the as we we're talking about before the restrictions are starting to lift um there in canada and where you are specifically and um mate it's it's you know for for a lot of uh, facility and physical location owners um you know it's it's been a tough time and like i said before it's it's really i guess a um a credit to yourself on being able to go no i'm not gonna um you know sit on my hands and and, and kind of just pretend nothing's happening i'm going to go out there and pull the trigger and make shit happen and and you've done it so um Congrats to yourself. Hats off to you, man. And um, I guess you deserve all the results you're getting. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been, uh, it's been a fun journey. 
I appreciate all the support and guidance and uh, I'm looking forward to the future. That's for sure. Awesome. Joe, appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully anyone listening in has taken a lot of information and, and sort of uh, inspiration, I guess, from, from the story as well. But uh, mate, we'll speak soon. Um, and that's it from us. Bye for now. All right. See you later.